Orovetti have been around as an IEM brand since 2015, but this is the first time I've ever tried any of their IEMs. Like most brands, they've got their own unique technologies. In their case, it's a special venting system for dynamic drivers. But as is always the case, the proof is in the listening when it comes to an IEM. And so I've got a series of three videos coming up for you, looking at the Orovetti range, starting with the OD100, then moving to the OD200, and then onto the OH700VB. I'm going to introduce those IEMs to you now in brief, and then move through and talk about some comparisons between the OD100 and some competitors, and then the OD100 versus the OD200, before I then move on to a new video for the OD200, and then another new video for the OH700VB. And so if you've arrived at one of the later videos, and you want to see the earlier ones, check the links down in the description below to go back to the beginning of this series. But you don't have to watch them in order, you can just go to the ones that you want to. It also means that if you've already seen one of these Orovetti IEM reviews on my channel, then you can skip past this next bit using the chapter markers down below in the timeline and jump forward to the part that becomes unique because I'm gonna repeat this next bit in all three of these videos. And that's the introduction of the three IEMs. Coming in at the bottom of the roundup that I have here is the OD100 from Orovetti. As you can see here, they're a very small, compact little metal shelled IEM. They're a single dynamic driver unit and they retail for just 70 US dollars. The single dynamic driver in each of these shells has an impedance of 16 ohms and a sensitivity of 105 decibels per milliwatt, making them very easy to drive. If we then look at the next model in the range, that takes us to the OD200. And again, it's just a single dynamic driver unit. It's also in a metallic shell, but this time it's a much more sculpted shell and a very, very nicely made, very comfortable and well-designed shell. The OD200 here jumps up to 199 US dollars, so it's a very significant jump up from the OD100, and there's probably a few reasons for that. One of them is that you've now got a beryllium coated dynamic driver in here, beryllium being an excellent material for making drivers out of, because it's a bit self damping, it's also very strong but very light, and so it should make for a more precise, less resonant driver. And then on top of that, you've also got the dedicated airflow distribution system that Orovetti have patented, that's known as DAD for short. And that's meant to manage the airflow and the pressure on both the front and back side of the driver to allow the dynamic drivers to operate at their optimum level. In addition to that, we've got tuning nozzles. So this one comes with two different tunings. I'll talk about those in the review of the ID200. And you're also getting swappable terminations between 4.4 mil, 3.5 mil, and I think there was 2.5 mil in the packet, definitely 3.5 and 4.4. Specifications on the OD200 are very similar to the OD100 in the sense that you've again got a 16 ohm earphone with sensitivity this time a little bit higher at 108 decibels per milliwatt. And that then brings us to the final IEM in the Orovetti lineup, or at least in the range that I've got here, and that's the OH700VB. Now you might notice the change in naming convention here. We've gone from OD to OH, and that's because now we've gone from D being dynamic driver in the last two to H being a hybrid design in the 700. The OH700VB comes in at 699 US dollars. And as I said, you're getting a multi-driver design here in a beautifully molded acrylic housing. And so specifically what's going on is we've got six balanced armatures and one dynamic driver per shell. We've again got tuning options, much like in the OD200, but this time instead of being a nozzle-based tuning system, we've moved to a switch-based tuning system on the front, sort of bottom point of the IEM shell, the bit that sits right down low near your earlobe. We've again got swappable plugs at the amplifier end of things, and some slightly different specifications due to the hybrid design of these. And so these come in with an impedance of just 12 ohms, and sensitivity that's even higher now at 112 decibels per milliwatt. So all three of these models are very easy to drive. You're not gonna have problems driving them from a dongle, a smartphone, a laptop, whatever you want to. And we'll talk shortly about what the level of quality is, and whether or not it's worth running them with higher end gear. Before we get there though, it is worth me mentioning that all three of these IEMs come with a good set of accessories, and they're also generally very comfortable as well. But I say generally because the design of the OD100 here is a little bit challenging just for me. This is not gonna be an issue for everybody, but for me, the specific angle of the nozzle, the length of the nozzle, means that when I put it in my ear, the right side ear tip sometimes actually bumps up against the first bend of the ear canal, and that can actually seal off the sound from coming out of that IEM. So it sounds like there's nothing at all coming out of the right channel, but if I wiggle it around, it breaks that seal and the sound can get through. So do be aware, I think the shape and length and angle of the nozzle from the OD100 may not be great for everybody, but the good news is the OD200 and the OH700VB have no such problems. So hopefully they'll be comfortable for you. If you've tried any of these three, do let us know in the comments down below how you went with them.
The other couple of general things I should mention is that they all come with a very nice set of tips. Nothing revolutionary or out of the ordinary, but a good solid range. You've got a combination of some simple soft black tips, and then also some white and black silicon tips where the internal core is a little bit harder, a little bit stiffer, and that can be really good for some people. So you've got a nice range of choices. I do still prefer some of the aftermarket options out there, but you can definitely buy these and expect to use them without having to go out and get aftermarket tips. And now one very final thing to mention about the design is that the OH700VB, talking about tips and nozzles and stuff like that, the OH700VB does have a slightly wider nozzle than some other models. And I mean some other models in the general world of IEMs. It's not a massively thick nozzle on the OH700VB, and I have no problems with it. It uses the same ear tips as all these models. But for those of you with very narrow ear canals, it might cause some problems by the time you take the nozzle plus a tip. It could get just a little bit thick for those with very small ear canals. But I think for most people, you're not going to have any fit and comfort issues with any of these three. And so let's dive in to talk about how they actually sound. Jumping into the OH700VB review now. And the first thing I'm going to say is it's a wonderfully detailed and technically capable IEM with what I think is excellent tonal balance. As I mentioned in the intro for these, they've got a switch on them, so you can very quickly change the tuning on the fly. And with the switch down, these are a warmer, bassier IEM. But one of the things I really like about them is they don't muddy up the soundstage or muddy up the detail just because you've got more bass. It's well controlled, it's kept nice and deep, and they're still very resolving despite being a warmer sound. On the other hand, if you want something a bit more neutral, you can flick the switch up, and they're going to give you a neutral sound, but not a boring sound. They're very enjoyable in both switch positions. I think though the strength in the OH700VB is very much in its ability to separate the sounds out. That's where it pulls away from the other two lower level Oravetti models, and indeed it's where it holds its own against some pretty stiff competition. These separate sounds beautifully, not in an incoherent way, but just allowing you to hear each sound where it belongs. This is one of those IEMs, and I adore IEMs like this, where you can kind of mentally wander around the soundstage. You can close your eyes and you can hear each sound, where it's placed within the recording, but it doesn't pull it apart in an artificial way. The soundstage overall has what I would describe as a good size for a sub $1,000 IEM, perhaps even for a slightly over $1,000 IEM, and the soundstage has a nice sense of sphericality to it. It's a round-shaped soundstage, which is how I think it should sound. That's what seems natural to me. And so it does sound very natural and very easy just to lose yourself in it mentally. And so whilst I do prefer the switch in the down position on the OH700VB, in either position, I think they're an excellent, excellent sounding IEM. When I was setting up for my comparisons, one of the IEMs that I thought would be an excellent comparison point would be the IE600 from Sennheiser. Unfortunately, I had a brain fade moment and reached for the IE900s, and so I ended up comparing the OH700VB with the IE900s, and the interesting thing about this is I actually ended up kind of preferring the OH700VB, and that's saying something because I love the IE900s. Listening to State Your Peace by Hootie and the Blowfish, the OH700VB came out crisp and clear. There was perhaps a little bit too much sense of emphasis in the upper mid-range, but that could also be in the mix. And as I moved over to the IE900, it did pull back a little bit on that upper mid-range emphasis, but it does make me think that the mix is a little bit focused there. Sounds like the guitar strums are just a little bit emphasised. The treble from the IE900 has a bit more sizzle to it. I don't think either is really bad, but I probably prefer what I was getting from the OH700VB. And the deep bass from the IE900 was pretty close to what I heard with the switch up on the OH700VB. And so for me, I actually prefer a little bit more bass, and therefore the switch down position on the OH700VB was my preference. But for those that like a sound like the IE900, as I said before, you've got the choice with the OH700s. Thinking about things like staging, I think the overall scale of the soundstage is probably a touch better from the IE900, in the sense that it throws a larger, wider soundstage, and probably a bit deeper as well. But I think the OH700 has its own strengths in the way it's able to sort of focus sounds within that soundstage. I feel like the imaging was just a tiny little bit sharper from the OH700VB. Again, it's hard to say in a situation like this which is actually more correct. But both were doing a good job and both had slight strengths and slight differences from each other. I did find myself preferring the slightly pulled back upper mid-range on the IE900. But that's going to be very preferential, and it's also going to change with things like the tips you use, the insertion depth you have. 
And so I wouldn't stand here and say that the RE900 is the correct tonality and the OH700 is the incorrect tonality, so much as that they're different and each person will have their own points of sensitivity and points of need for certain emphasis across the frequency range. And so trying to separate these two, it's actually the OH700VB that I found myself preferring. Now I haven't had time unfortunately to go back and do a full set of listening with the IE600, but the fact that the RH700 is the one that I would choose over the IE900, that's a really big achievement from an IEM that's over $300 cheaper. And the reason I do lean towards the RH700VB is the switch. The ability to have a little bit of a bass head type IEM and then at the flick of a switch have something more neutral and more balanced that's also technically very solid. I think that's absolutely fantastic and worth every cent of their cost. Assuming you're ready to spend that much money on an IEM, of course. But the point is they're performing technically at a level with more expensive IEMs and they're very impressive with it. And so if you're in the market for a fantastic sub $1,000 IEM that gives you a variable tuning, a little bit of bass, a little bit of neutrality, then I think the OH700VB should be really high on your list. I think the OD100 and the OD200 were both solid options. I think the OH700VB is an outstanding option. And so if it sounds good to you, I'll put links down below in the description where you can go and check it out for yourself. I'll also link through to the Passion for Sound Squig Link database where you can check that out, compare some measurements of the OH700VB with other IEMs that you might know. And so as always, I hope this video has been useful, informative and helpful. And if it has, please hit the like button and subscribe and ring the notification bell if you haven't already. For now though, let me leave it to the music. So happy listening, be kind to each other, and I'll see you here next time on Passion for Sound. Oh.